how can a crisp packet be a valid focus for A-level study? Um, I'm Alaric Hall, I teach in the School of English at the University of Leeds and um, we got sent round this list of questions, right, by different A-level examiners from um, English exam boards, both, both for English language and for English literature. Um, and I looked at this list and um, mostly I, despite being employed by the School of English, I mostly work on medieval Scandinavia and, and there wasn't very much about medieval Scandinavia on these lists. I don't know why you're, you're not studying it in your English A-levels. But, uh, but there it is. And so I looked at this list and I thought, well, what can I talk about? And there was this Chris Packet one. And I was like, well, I'm definitely no worse qualified than any of my other colleagues to talk about Chris Packets. So I'll give it a go. So this is actually kind of me thinking aloud. I have given some, you know, done a bit of preparation on this. But it is kind of me thinking aloud about what is potentially quite an interesting question about what A-levels are, what education is, um, what academics are trying to do in relation to the world um, through the medium of the crisp packet. I went for walkers here because uh, uh, it seems to me that that's the kind of most iconic British crisp brand. No idea what it'd be like if we went over the pond. I'm focusing on UK crisps today. Um, and of course in the UK we call them crisps, right? Not say chips or potato chips. Um, so in the, immediately there's a kind of linguistic thing going on here. We can actually kind of detect region and identity through this kind of crisp packet. Um, so it saves me Walker's crisps. I'm going to think a bit more about crisps themselves in a minute. But before I actually start looking at like packets of crisps of various different manufacturers, um, I'd, I'd like to just kind of step back and, and think about kind of how I kind of first responded to this problem. Um, where do I want to begin? Yeah, crisp packets, right? I guess part of what's provocative about this question, this crisp packet question, um, is that for us, the idea of the crisp packet is like so tightly identified with low culture, um, with um, bad diets, um, probably working class or kind of chavy culture. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this is necessarily true, but these are just associations that are kind of doing the rounds. Um, the, the crisp packet is the bane of every head teacher's life because they get scattered in the playground. Um, so, so there's something like um, really kind of almost metaphorical about what a crisp packet means. In a way, this is a question about does low culture belong in A-levels? So that's something I want to kind of think about, that kind of bigger issue. And coming from an English department, uh, that's going to connect with the canon. Um, we talk a lot about canons of text. Um, not in the sense of kind of big guns that you put on ships to sink other ships, but just collections of texts that are seen as being really kind of worthwhile, being the right kinds of things to study. So Chris Packett's going to take us into some of those issues about syllabuses and that kind of thing. And then there's also kind of um, the question that's really important for me as a scholar starting to think about something, which is what kind of work have other people done? Um, and I want to give you a sense of how I kind of go, uh, went about kind of starting to tackle that, um, just so you can kind of see how, how scholars do it. Um, if I kind of get asked to give a conference paper or something, what do I do if, if I've got to talk about crisps? Well, uh, I was talking to some A-level students uh, a couple of weeks ago, and, uh, and I said, who uses Google.com? There's a lot of kind of brand names in this particular um, talk. There we go. Who uses Google.com? Like, most people put up their hands. There's one or two people who didn't. I was like, oh, why didn't you put up your hand? Don't you use Google? And, and they were like, uh, no, we just couldn't be bothered to put up our hands. I was like, thanks. Anyway, um, and then I was like, who uses scholar.google.com? No hands at all. Actually, no, it's one. One person did. Um, I go to scholar.google.com. Uh, Google subscribe to all the academic journals. They kind of put a particular search engine up there so that you can search those. So it's very quick and easy to get a sense of what's out there. Well, I put in Chris Packet and I got about 300 hits. Then I remembered that probably most people are writing in American English and a bit of hunting around led me to potato chips. Once I put potato chips in, you get 30,900 articles and books written by scholars with crisps in. Okay, so, so and, and potato chips is probably going to include the things that British people call chips, but Americans call fries as well. But there it is. You know, there's a lot of kind of fried potato related research out there. This is clearly a huge academic subject. Um, if you add packet to that, you get down to about 15,000 hits. So it's like, blimey, there's, there's loads out there. Um, but what I'm interested in doing is trying to work out how as someone in an English department, 
or how you, as someone who's doing an A-level in English, I suspect, how, how we are going to relate to crisp packets. Um, so lots of, lots of research out there. Um, in fact, I was overwhelmed by the amount of research. Um, but most of it is in food science, it's in public health, um, it's in um, design studies, not the kind of stuff that I'm used to dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so I did something else that's always really important for me when I'm starting to try and get a handle on a topic. Um, I'm privileged to work in a university where we systematically gather all sorts of different scholars who work on different stuff in one place. And I started asking my colleagues, I've got to talk to like, A-level students about crisp packets. What do you make of that? And I've got quite a lot of interesting, different responses. And I want to kind of share those with you as well, just to kind of get a sense of where we might be going with this crisp stuff. Then I'll look at some actual crisps. Um, I asked a colleague who works on the Renaissance, she works on things like Shakespeare, and uh, her response when I said I was talking about how can Chris Packets be a valid study of A-level study, uh, subject of A-level study, was to go, oh God, it was exactly like that. Um, and, uh, and I was like, oh, what, what, what's the matter? I was about to use her name, but she'd probably not, uh, we'll, we'll give her a pseudonym to protect her identity, we'll call her Bernard. Um, I was like, Bernard? What, what's the matter? And she was like, ah, just why do people out there think that, you know, somehow any text is kind of equally valid? How, like, some packet of crisps is equivalent to, to a sonnet by Shakespeare. Perfectly reasonable opinion. And I went and asked another colleague. She works on uh, linguistics, um, and so she has a kind of different take on the world, I suppose. And she was like, oh, yeah, I went to a really interesting lecture about crisp packets just the other year. Um, she'd gone to this conference, and uh, one of the speakers at this linguistics conference works on crisp packets. Um, characteristically, I uh, asked his name and then forgot it, and haven't found it out since. And so there, somewhere in the 30,000 hits on Google, is probably this guy who works on crisp packets that I could have actually gone and read up on. And the kind of stuff he was doing sounded quite interesting, because he was reaching out from your actual crisp packet to what's going into the crisps. Um, turns out he was a celiac, he, he's allergic to, to gluten, wheat products, yet there are loads of wheat products in crisps, despite them being made fundamentally out of potatoes. Well, in many brands of crisps at any rate. Um, and he was starting to reach out from the study of crisps to the study of agriculture, agricultural subsidies in the USA, marketing, um, th this enormous kind of phenomenon of agribusiness, um, at the end of which is you eating your kind of packet of crisps. Um, full of stuff that you don't really need in your crisps. Um, I'm going to come back to this because I think it's a really interesting angle, but there was a colleague who was quite positive in the old crisp department. So then I started to think, okay, maybe literature people don't like crisp packets, but linguistic people are into crisp packets. So then I asked another linguistics colleague what she thought, and she was like, oh, crisp packets. And I was like, blimey, um, what's the problem now? And, uh, and she said, yeah, that's exactly the kind of half-baked, woolly thing that teachers who've done an English literature degree teach when they go and do English language A-level because they're too scared to get into the really difficult stuff. I'm not necessarily dissing your teacher, right? Um, who, who knows what, what they've been up to? But this is what my colleague said. And I think it's very interesting to get a sense of just what people in, an, in a university English department make of some of these things. Um, there's a lot of prejudice doing the rounds against English language as an A-level, I think even perhaps among people who teach English language at university, so beware. Um, but uh, yeah, she was really frustrated because what she really wants people to be doing is getting into problems of syntax. Um, Chris Packett's not probably that great for syntax, you get very short sentences. Um, she's going to be interested in questions of phonology. She wants people to go out and do coursework, taking recordings of kids in the school playground and analysing uh, sound changes and, and register and stuff like that. Um, on the other hand, I then talked to a historian, this is the last person I asked, you'll be glad to know, I, uh, I talked to a historian, he was like, oh yeah, I wanted to do a, a module on potatoes for just years. I was like, really? Potatoes? Wow, why? And he's like, the, the, everything's there. <laughs> um, the discovery of the new world, it's a new world food, the peasantry of early modern Europe, kind of subsisting on potatoes, the Irish potato famine, modern agribusiness. Um, he, he felt that the potato was a way to kind of tell this amazing cultural history story. So I kind of got all these different perspectives on, on what we might do with crisp packets kind of in an English department or in a kind of humanities department. Um, and, uh, and I've got to kind of think about that. So I went down to the students' union and to the, uh, the supermarket there and got some packets of crisps. Let's have a look at them and see what I make of this stuff. <laughs> 